right. Hello, everyone. We are the Fake News Detector team. I'm Audrey Lau, and I was the data scientist and mathematician. Hello, my name is Bernice, and I'm also one of the data scientists, as well as a product manager. Hi, I'm Datta, and I was the product manager and data scientist. Hi, I'm Ishan, and I was a mathematician and web developer. I'm Eric, I'm the machine learning engineer, and our instructor was Stella, and we made a fake news detector as our project. So to try this out, um, we'll come with something that we know is true first. And let's see, it says real news, and we can sell on something that's fake. And that's fake news. Okay, so why do we need a fake news detector? As new people create social media accounts every day across different platforms, such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and many more platforms, it is convenient for people to, who want to spread fake news to do so, and they have a huge platform to spread the news across. That's why it's important to stop and spread the fake news wherever we see it and avoid it from spreading too far. And sometimes when we look at different news platforms, such as CNN and Fox News, you see two different news articles on the same topic. And it is important for the public to know which news source to trust and figure out which news source provides fake news. And spreading false news about vaccines, viruses, and like we are in the pandemic right now, and terrorists can be dangerous as it can be the question between life and death for some people. That's why it's necessary to stop these false news so people don't do harm to themselves and the people around them. And finally, sometimes some news articles just don't make sense. So it's necessary for your own satisfaction to make sure the news you're reading is in fact true, in fact not true. Can you, uh, okay, first of all, I'm so puzzled. Like, how do you make it work? I'm actually very puzzled. Uh, we have things down here about our, how we made it in evaluations. Can you type in uh, learn AI with, you can learn AI with zero coding experience? Our thing uh, is specifically with like political news between 2015 and 2018, because that's where it is, but we can try. Um, just might not give uh, the- uh, Never mind, no, never mind, no, never mind, yeah. All right. Um, so for our data set, for our product, we compiled uh, other data using other data sets from Kaggle. So originally each data set from Kaggle comprised of different categories in order to separate each news article. Some of these included dates, different authors, the country which it was published in languages, and even a real versus fake classification. Additionally, the dates of each article varied between March of 2015 to February 2018. So in total, our final data set had a little bit over 51,000 news articles. About 26,000 were fake news and 24,000 were real news. So although there was more fake news than real news, it was still around a 50-50 split. And furthermore, including both text and tiles, over 100 million words were used in our final data set. And to clean all this data, we first used pandas to categorize everything into title and text or TT, which is the title and content of our articles, and real or fake, which is whether the news is real or fake. We then used NLTK to tokenize and converted everything to lowercase. We also separated some conjoined words, such as contractions, and we separated any typos, such as words conjoined at um, periods with no spaces. And the last thing we did was uh, filter out any unnecessary text, such as links with reg X and stop words. We tested four different models and in order of increasing complexity, logistic regression, support vector machine, naive Bayes, and finally LSTM. We stuck with LSTM because its complexity brings a lot of benefits, particularly the cell state, which allows the machine to recognize words and remember words from a few words ago, instead of just the last word in the current input. This allows it to get a more general understanding of the whole sentence. So for our evaluations, we used a confusion matrix to figure out how effective our model is, since the confusion matrix basically just shows variations of the ratios of predicted to actual values. So to start off, the accuracy measures how often the classifier is correct. And for our model, the accuracy on the testing set was around 0 0.9897. Moving on to the recall rate, that measures how often true is predicted when the result is actually true. 
the recall rate of our testing set was around 0 0.9893. And then lastly, we used precision to measure how often a predicted true value is actually correct. For our testing set, the precision was 0 0.9893. And overall, our training model was pretty accurate based on these evaluations because we were able to get around 99% of accuracy across all the calculations. And to visualize the performance of our models, we constructed receiver operating characteristic or ROC curves and calculated their area under the curves or AUC with scikit. Um, so to do this, we first measured them at different thresholds and got the false positive rate and true positive rate and plotted this on an FPR versus T, um, TPR graph to form an ROC curve. Then we calculated the area under that curve and the score of one would mean that we perfectly classified fake from real news and a score of 0 0.5 means that the classification was completely random. So the AOC for all of our models um, was extremely high. It was at above 0 0.9, which means we were really good at separating fake news from real news in our specific data set. Yeah, through our project, we explored many different AI training models, found data sets, cleaned the data, and utilized it to create our fake news detector. The main challenge that we faced was the data set because it was only limited to the 2015 to 2018 range. So that might cause the detector to become less accurate for current news submissions. Uh, looking forward, we plan to expand our data set and retrain our model so that it can recognize new submissions outside of that range more accurately and prevent overfitting in the model overall. So yeah, this concludes our presentation. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Pause, right? Like this is this is awesome. You know, like I think, wow, this is, has so much like we'll like use like in, like scenarios. You know, this this is awesome. Okay.